Greetings, unsettled souls. Yo! Welcome to the correct views. Wish we had better news on the views to start us off here, but uh, it is what it is, friends. Uh, make sure if you're getting a hold of this on YouTube or Rumble, nobody's on Rumble. Rumble's where great videos go to die. But if you're getting this by some miracle on Rumble, or if you are finding it on YouTube, I genuinely appreciate you being here. I am asking all of my listeners to run to Opera News when you find the show there. It's the same show, but I can't stress to you how helpful it is. There would not even be a show for you to listen to if it was not for Opera News. So that's that's I just want to put that out there. I hope you are finding me there. And if you need a link to it, let me know at the correct views at hotmail.com. All right, friends. No, oh, this isn't good. Let me get rid of this tab. All right. Uh, Wall Street Journal. U.S. struggles to count its citizens in Afghan as Biden weighs the withdrawal delay. Now, this came out yesterday. Since then, uh, he has given a speech where he would not address the reporters who were asking him to talk, to answer questions. He came out talking about this ridiculous infrastructure bill that isn't even an infrastructure bill, but I don't even think he knows what infrastructure is. And compounding everything, making everything far, far worse, is the fact that he is allowing the Taliban to dictate the terms to which we leave the country. That is piss poor leadership. And if you look at what, what we're up against here, you can certainly tell that all of the people who have been in favor of this withdrawal have been betrayed by the way that this withdrawal has been conducted. That, that, that's as clear as I can put it for everybody. With logistics and conditions at the Kabul International Airport growing more dire, the Biden administration on Tuesday is scheduled to discuss a withdrawal from Afghanistan beyond an August 31st deadline that left just eight days to evacuate thousands of people. Compounding the problems are the challenges born of the more rapid than expected Taliban takeover. Yeah, you think? Um... I can tell you one other thing, though, and I, I've had some people asking about this. I've heard it chattered about in some of the comment lines to the videos, and I do want to address this. People are saying, okay, we understand that Biden has been a, an unmitigated disaster, but he is new, quote-unquote new, in the White House as it pertains in some ways to the number of people which we have here. Like, he hasn't been vice president since Obama was in office, obviously. So it stands to reason that he would not have all the most accurate names, numbers, addresses, logistics of everyone there. Why would that be? Well, there's a couple reasons, and I do want to address that because I think that there are enough legitimate things to crucify Biden with over the way that he's handled this that we don't need to create ones that aren't there. Um, not everybody who arrives arrived in Afghanistan necessarily checked in with the embassy or authorities. They didn't always say when they moved. Maybe they worked at a job. They didn't like it. They started another life. They moved. They're gone. They're not in the area. Nope, they were under the impression that America was going to do a better job than this, and now they're stranded. That is how that happens. And I, I that but the trouble is, Biden didn't need. Well, hear me out with this. Biden did not need to know who was there. He didn't need to. All he needed to know was that he was using the military in a way that could get them out if they wanted to leave. Before moving the military out. You don't try to 
move the people away after the people who are in charge of protecting the people moving away have already gone. That's not exactly that hard for most people to figure out, but for Biden, it seems like rocket scientist here. It says, uh, in response, the Taliban, through direct talks with the U.S. and Cabal, said it wouldn't recognize any extension. Uh, I agree with the F-bomb that was uh, dropped towards the Taliban in reference to exactly what it is that we care about their opinion. Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, yeah, his name doesn't run out of my head. Yeah, it's a great big one middle, well, one finger salute to what the Taliban wants. Friends, you want the correct views, I'll give you the correct views. This thing is such an unmitigated disaster, not because we left. We, we, we should have never went. Leaving was the right thing to do. This is a disaster because of the way in which we have left. This has created holes and problems to which none of us could have ever, ever imagined. I had another article up on this, and I didn't think that I was going to have time to get to it, but you know what? I think I'm probably going to. And, and it's just important because I think so much of this underscores the lack of preparation, which is a direct result of a lack of leadership. Okay, now that is another article. I'll get to it another time. But the point, the article pretty much was pointing out the differences between Donald Trump's withdrawal plan and Joe Biden's. And the biggest takeaway from this, the, and I'm going to leave you, I want you guys to hit share and subscribe so I don't want to make this real long. The biggest takeaway is this. Trump's way said you won't so much as swat a fly off of the noses of anyone that we tell you you cannot touch as we leave. Or there won't even be a, a pile of dust to recognize that you were ever here. Allah himself will have to sweep you up. Because that wasn't done, we have the fiasco that we have now. That, friends, that's the correct view. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for listening. Hit share, hit subscribe. I need you to do that greatly.